is Sarah, and I like to inspire and help people in connecting with their inner depth, meaning, and magic. And in this podcast, I feel inspired to share what I recently, which is literally five minutes ago, what I recently understood from my um, recent, not confusion, but so I've been, I've been wondering about how to express my heart, how to listen to my heart, and you know, in in that self development spiritual community, not that it's a community, but on that path, you know, a lot of different people awaken in different ways and. All of us want to share and for me personally I found it really difficult to follow my own guidance and to know what's right for me versus what's expected of me or the shoulds and the shouldn'ts and so I just kept struggling all the time until even now to really know like okay is that what I truly want to express and you know even when I do have an idea to express just finding a million ways why I should put it off or not express it if I have something that wants to be expressed through words like a video or a blog post and or a dance like if I just want to dance you know so maybe this video would just kind of go all over the place but I just want to express what needs to come out right now and what needs to come out is that whatever needs to come out has to come out you know we're not talking about going to the bathroom um but what i actually mean is the idea just came to me like that that um you're inspired you gotta write this idea down if it's something that you can actually do now and you have the energy for it and you're inspired to do it then by all means do it and if you you know if you don't have anything else in your schedule by all means do it um if you know if you have something on your schedule you can move move it if you can't you know write it down and but but express it like it has to come out you guys don't know how many times I, I just had an urge of like either an idea or something like like a song or whatever that had to be expressed that I just did not, you know? This deep desire to be seen and heard and approved of just stifled all the time, all the time. And if you're like me and I know a lot of people like that especially nowadays like even people that I know that I have been friends with for a while are finding so many ways to express their light um, through dance music podcasts um, even if they would make videos the the style of their video changed books blog posts <laughs> it's just so um empowering and inspiring that the soul the frequency that we are the the arch not the archetype but like you know who we were meant to be be not in a way like who we were meant to be but more like 
the soul expression is becoming limitless. And so imagine that. Imagine your soul wants to express something and you don't. Um, so that, that kind of ties into the idea I had like, oh my God, if I'm not expressing what needs to come out, what, like, I'm the one stifling my soul, like, at an ego level, for whatever subconscious reason that I think that whatever is inspired should not be expressed. And so in the lines of this, what I have been learning, and I, I do want to insist that Oh man, you guys, like there's a gap, a very intense gap that for me, it's a slap in the face, actually. There's a gap between, you know, realizing something, you're like, oh, whoa, like, where does that come from? That's kind of an eye opener. So there's a gap between this and and releasing the subconscious blocks that are preventing you to actually be that person. And let me tell you, pure honesty time. If you resonate with something, you're like, oh, whoa, that means you are that version. That, well, what I meant is like, there's a version of you in a parallel dimension that exists that you can tap into once you've released all the blocks that you are not that person because the reason why you went like oh wow i really resonate with this information it means that your soul recognized this information you know what i mean like for example the type of information i like to share and all that like souls and alternate realities and all that it's one thing for me to want to share and it's another thing to release all the blocks that are like, oh, some people are going to watch your video and be like, what are you talking about? This is woo woo stuff. And like, there's a person that I value so much and I love so much that, but they, I don't think they don't believe in this, but I think that they kind of have resistance um, in regards to that information. They think it's like woo woo or whatever. And and every time I want to share this information, there's something in me that's like, what is that person going to think? Um, so there is always a gap between you realizing this, releasing the blocks, and then another gap, which is learning the new ways to be this new person, like allowing the space, allowing the, the learning process of a new habit. So for, for me, it's really frustrating. It's frustrating because, and not in a way that I'm not gonna do it, but just sometimes you just wanna click a button and I'm sure that some of you wish that button was real because I know I do. I wish there were so many buttons out there that are not there um, just because we are not light bodies, at least not in this reality, you know? We are very solid. So by the time things manifest into solid reality, you know, there's quite the shifting up there. Um, yeah. So I have been learning about listening to my heart. And that is quite the shift, my dear. It's pretty intense. Very, very intense. Listen to your heart. What the fuck do you mean? Um, <laughs> with like what? Like stethoscope I don't know how you say that but for real the first time I like heard of this concept it was so far-fetched 
Like what? Listen to my heart. What is this Pocahontas? Um, it's funny because today I had the the song from Pocahontas. What is it? Listen to your heart. You will understand. Na 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 na. It's really a beautiful song and. Man, but the message of this movie is really powerful. Listen to your heart. But then what does it mean? For me, man, first time I heard it, like... What? Listen to your... What? Like... I swear, I think my first meditations were all about trying to, like, listen quite literally and I this is the process like that's part of the process for you to just try just try keep trying um sometimes I would stumble upon information through videos and and it would really resonate but then it's it's about the gaps right it's about receiving the information resonating with it releasing the blocks that are um that were preventing me from fully embracing this as an actual reality and a possibility and then implementing the new habit of actually quieting my mind so that I can actually listen to my heart. Which I'm going to tell you what I found out is that listening to your heart is actually listening to what feels right. What feels right which for me is like a concept a foreign concept i can see how my whole life led to this life lesson because mm, family wise society wise and even personally i always considered myself to be a very mind oriented person, very logical, very uh, Cartesian, is that what they call it? Like, I sort of always thought that I did have to see to believe, you know, like that, that thing where when Jesus is um, what? Reborn? Not reborn, but like, you know, three days after his death, um, he appears to his disciples, and then Thomas, one of the disciples, asks to see his hands, um, which should have a mark of the nails that got nailed, and therefore he would believe that this is actually J.C., seeing is believing that's where it comes from and i always just thought thomas was right man like you do have to see to believe because how else would i believe when in reality that's not really what it is isn't it it's quite the opposite you got to believe to be able to see if you talk about programs and your beliefs, and if you don't believe in something to be true, it will never be true. If you believe the opposite, well, you will be experiencing quite the opposite reality. So if you don't believe that you can listen to your heart, that your heart even has a voice, like, you know, and not to be taken quite literally, but I guess what I understood is that the heart, depending on the feeling, has an electromagnetic frequency and resonance that it, um, quite literally, it, it's your aura. Um, and, and then you just start attracting those experiences that feel like whatever you feel, you will attract. So hence the importance of getting in tune with what you feel and expressing how you feel in a sane healthy way um and then the more you practice 
getting in touch with your feelings, a lot of great things happen. The first is you become more aware. Um, that's what I noticed is that I just become more aware of what I'm feeling, what I'm sensing. Another thing is that you become more aware, first of all, of you know how you're feeling. Second of all, of what doesn't feel right, but in two different ways. Like what doesn't feel right that is triggering you, like as a subconscious program. But then another thing, like what doesn't feel right that is just not you. You know, it's just not you, but then you kind of don't really have a reaction to it, but it's just not good, not for you. Like, for example, I don't know, uh, you have the choice between a red dress and a blue dress. Uh, what is that, the pills? Um, you have a choice between a red dress and a blue dress, and you're just literally going for the red dress because you don't really resonate with the blue dress. It doesn't mean that the blue dress triggered you, but, you know. And then the third thing would be that you become aware of what actually feels right what feels good and and so i guess i can segue into another thing that came up for me which is following your highest excitement and i swear you know of course that for me it started with abraham hicks and after that just i just kept watching videos not I kept watching, like binge watching, but there was an avalanche of similar information that came into my life that just pretty much sounded the same, like follow your highest excitement, you know? Like if, let's say for example, right now I am to write a blog post and I am so desperate to find an idea that resonates something that i will be so inspired to write about and you know we i personally i would romanticize the process like oh my god you're gonna sit down and be so inspired and write for hours and if like if that doesn't happen quite literally it created such resistance in me like oh well i guess that will never happen and you know fuck that but um you want to write this blog post and zero ideas are coming out and you become more and more frustrated as the time goes because you're creating all these limits in your head or maybe you do have a limit like actually you work for someone and that person has a deadline um and i'm not going to talk about like 95 jobs and valuing your time and all that fake construct but let's just say okay that you do need a certain idea maybe you have a channel on youtube and you want to get videos out every monday like i thought i would be able to um and i skipped a week just because i was not inspired but in hindsight i was going through some things and i did forgive myself because I'm the one who created all that unnecessary stress. But let's say, back to the blog post, you want to write this blog post, you're like, okay, I'm ready. Nothing comes out. And something deep inside is like, yo, I just want a nap. Like, please, I would be very excited for a nap. Or um, you think about a person and you really miss that person. You're like, oh, man, I really want to call this person or you just want to go for a ride or a walk and you kind of have to do that i watched a video from a guy called aaron dowdy where he explains something about your higher self like different things about your higher self that will surprise you 
and he drew a dot like not a diagram but kind of like something he drew something okay um that blew my mind quite literally and it's like the simplest drawing i don't know if i should draw it for you um i think i will so you know how you keep in your life i'm gonna try to draw it for you in the video so let's say that's your timeline okay your linear third dimensional solid life your existence and you're just here okay going about your way la 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 and you can only see like this way right those are like all the possible solutions for you and you keep let's say you choose that direction you keep pushing and pushing and pushing and that might not be the right direction you know but then somewhere along the line there's like a tree and like a so that's his drawing right and like a little river and as you all know we all have higher selves right Did you see that? Okay. Hey, what's up, man? It's my higher self. So, it's not that it's literally above us in a construct way, but it's, it just, for me, that's a metaphor of the ability to see beyond the veil of the third dimension okay and it can see all the different possibilities and identify the one that will lead you to your not destination but to the fulfillment of your soul's journey the fastest i guess um through your highest excitement so it knows or you should be knowing that the path to your destination or you know wherever you want to go you can have access to it through your highest excitement which is literally your highest self way to communicate to you like bitch if it feels good do it you know and so it knows, it sees, and it tries to make you feel it, right? And you need, I need to receive this guidance by fully trusting, by fully embracing it as, hey man, my mind is not going there with you, but it feels right. That means I must do it. It means leaving a lot of constructs behind. It means leaving a lot of fears behind. Leaving past identities of, oh, that's not me. It can't be me. I'm not the type of person who does that. And boy, like I'm that type of person, literally, who creates all these stories in my head about what I can or what I can't do or who I am, or what kind of person, and oh my god, I'm an introvert, I can't be that kind of person, I can't dance in front of everyone, so, let me tell you, and I feel really raw saying that, the path to my highest excitement is fucking scary, because it means that my identity needs to be completely different. And I can see and sense how my subconscious programs right now are literally just trying to keep me safe. And I'm, and by I'm, I mean the ego mind, the survival brain, the reptilian brain is freaking out because it's like, 
Ooh, girl, that's not your childhood memories, you know? You got some shit to clean up. Um, and it's it's okay to shift your focus and to manifest. It's okay to visualize and envision and step into this new identity every now and then. But the subconscious beliefs and the memories with the most emotional charge will be the ones that win any conscious um, visualization, literally. And I understand that the more you visualize, the more your brain starts re-imprinting the old memories. There are so many ways to re-imprint. For me, I use faster EFT, which is literally impeccable. You rewrite so fast there's a system of questions that just lead you to answers you like it would have taken you so much meditation so much stillness and i'm not unpromoting all of that because like all of this is like a salad of must do's i don't like telling you what to do but for me that's my experience i used faster eft and i still use it um to release all limiting beliefs and rewrite my life for the life I actually want to get. And so I can see how I need to use faster EFT to rewrite beliefs against listening to my heart, going with the flow of my highest excitement. Because man, sometimes you're like, man, I should be working. I should be working. Hard work, work, work. And and it's hard to imagine that it's okay for you to relax or it's okay for you to take a break or a nap or go out in the sun. Like, There's a lot of beliefs that contradict that. Another thing that came up for me is work um, and valuing your time versus valuing your energy. And... I recently watched the most recent Teal Swan video about time management or was it something like that anyways one of her recent videos where she explains how you know we're um, shifting away from the paradigm of nine to five of you know I value my time and um, since that since I started waking up something in me knew that getting paid per hour doesn't seem right at all like the, there needs to be a system working for me making me money while i sleep and not in a lazy way but in a way that it just kind of felt right it felt that Bro, if I create a system that brings me money, a system that consistently provides a service to people without me necessarily having to exchange my time for money, it just felt like this is what I'm meant to do um, in multiple ways, like having multiple streams of income, passive income, including active income that just kind of felt right in a way that it would be it, it would make more sense as an energetic exchange rather than a time exchange because the way she explains that in her video is that since time doesn't exist and time is a r illusion and a construct construct of the third dimension um you're literally exchanging money, which is energy, against something that doesn't really exist. So you're kind of throwing money in like the garbage. And I remember that when I was at work, like a nine to five job, I, if, if time permitted and the deadline permitted, I would um, extend as much as I could knowing that I would still get paid and just could give back my shit tomorrow instead of today and bust my ass 
and I could take as many breaks as I want. I'm still getting like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Or imagine having spent hours creating a course that can generate you money as you sleep. I mean, you know what I mean? And what feels right for me in this paradigm is that time does not exist. And you have just emitted a course, literally, and people are just snatching at it, like grabbing at it. And you've literally um, fractalized yourself all over and just have all these streams of abundance coming to you as a thank you for just this profound, powerful energy that you just emitted. I don't know. That's just how I see it. It kind of made sense in my head, actually. So, yeah, I've I've just been really um, questioning and gnawing at the lesson of work and hard work which kind of ties in with follow your heart and your highest excitement and um yeah you know because work i mean nobody wants to work literally everybody wants to have fun and um last but not least i guess for this podcast is a metaphor that I think I have mentioned before, but imagine a baby, right? And that baby, or imagine a dog. The baby or dog are having so much fun. Um, you know, an adult person would look at them like, oh my God, they're having so much fun. Like, wow, they're being so amused. When in reality, that dog or that baby are just like there's no label they don't know that they're having fun or that they're sad they're literally just channeling their their being they're just living their emotions and just what's coming out for them is being expressed in that very moment so for them there's no fun there's no sadness there's just being and just different frequencies of that existence or beingness and the next the next thing would be that that baby slash dog are taking fun really seriously. So that smacked me in the face when I read that. I don't really remember where I read it or I heard it. Um, Oh, The Alchemist, is it? The Alchemist? (sighs) No, I don't think it was The Alchemist. Anyways, whatever. Um, Yeah, and that kind of helped me look at work in a different way because, you know, strip work out of all the programmed beliefs about oh, work hard, play hard, and just the separation between playing and working and work entailing doing something you really hate doing, which you're not present in the moment while doing it and all that jazz. It just kind of put another dimension into work which for me just meant wow rewrite all of your beliefs about work because if you enjoy what you're doing you will never work a day in your life and I know that for a lot of you you have heard that a lot I know I had enough hearing it Oh, if you work hard, no, if you like what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Man, that just boggled my mind for the longest time. Like, it seems right, and I know you're right, and I this makes sense to my logical mind, but it just didn't really compute until all of that kind of came together. So... It's past midnight, by the way, if you're wondering. I can't wait to go to bed, but that had to come out and I needed to express it. And 
I hope that helped and inspired some of you to at least start thinking maybe about where you can start seeing things differently and where maybe there is some baggage that needs to be let go of because Lord knows, man, I know if you're watching that video, you are destined for... You know what? I'm not going to say it. You're destined for greatness because you are greatness. You're not destined for greatness. You are meant to express your highest light. And if you felt shivers then you know what? You will. You just will. And I am so grateful that I get to share this. And on that note, I'll see you in the next podcast. If you need any help, um, check out the link below or the links below for sessions. Um, subscribe and hit the bell button for more podcasts. Um, inspiration keeps coming and i would love to share it with you and uh a peace